What's up, everybody? This is Sticky Tack. We made it all the way to episode 7. Okay, so... I would like to get this cryolite done so that I can clean this mess up. So let's, uh, let's try and move through this tree pretty quickly here. I recall, needed sand and whatever that is, salt. Okay, there's our salt and sand. Unlock diamond and lime dust. Okay, I know this crusher is important. From what I understand, if you put a miner on a dirt node or a bog or whatever, peat, and you put the crusher on there, then you just get straight sand out of there. And then crystal oscillators. Oh, we need that for something in one of the other mam trees. This right here. Okay. Ten inventory slots. And then shatter rebar. Okay. So we need diamonds. And diamonds and crushed tin for some reason. Okay, so how do we make diamonds? Cannot sink. I remember learning that a while back. So cryolite and water makes diamonds and lime dust. Cryolite and water in the sorter. <clears throat> so the question question is going to be. What do I do with all this stuff? I probably want to take one of these, I'll let one of these continue running and then take the other node down to the water and make diamonds, I suppose. Oh, I don't have to pump stuff all the way up here. Do I want to make something permanent? Probably not until I get some of this node unlocked, I would think. See what's under these. All right, so here's the mess we have now. And I'd like to turn this into something a little bit more organized. This actually really wasn't too bad. Uh, I just have the two sorters, one making the silica recipe of, out of cryolite and one making the salt recipe out of cryolite. Um, and then I'm just sink storing, sink storage containering the uh, items there, just so I have some being produced. And then we'll take that second node on the right side of the screen and make our diamonds down at the bottom. Okay, so this is all very underwhelming. I was expecting more <laughs> than just a handful of sorters and uh, we're done. But as you can see here, we got diamonds uh, being made. You can't sink diamonds, so I'm just using industrial storage here for the diamonds and the lime dust. And uh, the lime dust, you need to make things into concrete. So, uh, like concrete foundations. So I have that in my back pocket now. And I will probably start abusing that. Well, now that we got all that automatically producing, we might as well put some use to it. Here's, uh, here's some new lights and a handful of new signs over at our space elevator depot. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any other ideas you have for this. I really want this to be cool. But I cannot think of anything good. I have no creative bones in my body. So when you when you take molten slag and put it in the fluid conditioner, you get cold slag and sulfur. So I'm gonna take advantage of that sulfur while we're doing MAM unlocks and start to work down this sulfur tree. Um, from what I understand, the there's some kind of carbon dust or something along those lines that you unlock down here. Um, so I want to get to that point because you need it for. Uh, actually, you need it for beating phase two. And we need heavy modular frames. So, <laughs> uh, there's our carbon dust, though. Two hours later. You know, like SpongeBob. Because I just had to collect all this crushed iron and crushed tin, and, and it took two hours. Yeah, yeah, you get it. You get it. Okay, so we're in really good shape to uh, start clearing up the rest of this tree. So let's get these salty ingots. 
And then these big boys, crystal oscillators. And then this crusher module. So we, uh, we unlocked quite a bit here. We can get the radio tower, or radar tower, which I'm actually kind of anxious to get. Uh, to start scanning for all the nodes, all the special nodes. And then Explosive Residence Application Pulse Novelisk. Uh, I haven't played since these came out, but I've heard these are kind of fun. Shouldn't be too bad. So maybe let's get some crystal oscillators going. They weren't too bad, right? Oh boy. <laughs> Okay, I can't get them going. I don't have the manufacturer. Alright, well, never mind. I mean, overall, that cryolate tree didn't. Like, it, I didn't feel that good. I didn't get, like, a good thing out of it, I don't think. Yet, I, maybe I'm a little bit ahead. Maybe I need the crystal oscillators. I, like. But I can't even make them without the manufacturer. Uh, that just felt weird. I wouldn't call it a waste of time, but it didn't feel value added. So I went back and added this voiceover in post editing, and I'm just giving you a heads up. The next four minutes is me trying to figure out how good the crusher is. So if you don't want to listen to me scrolling through menus and trying to figure out the numbers for the crusher and how good it actually is just go ahead and skip ahead but uh spoiler alert the crusher is op so like i mean really what did we get out of that tree this explorer would be cool but we need motors we're pretty much oh with a crusher module okay so that's probably the important one Let's just, does this tell me what what it would do if there's like recipes attached to it. Okay. this. Crushed uh, bauxite crotinium. So these crushed recipes, the ratio is the same, you just don't get the crushed stone byproduct, the crusher, uh, wait a minute, no that's wrong, crusher module. So it's one to one with 20 crushed stone. So this actually, it's the same thing, you just get more crushed stone crusher module how much power does it use oh I also can get this energy module oh but you it says have the bonus from all modules So you get, I actually dig up half the amount.
It uses 25 megawatts. Okay, so it is significantly more than a crusher. So I wonder if, does it have, it says from all modules. So I'm guessing the mining head would not count there. So it doesn't have the amount that's extracted. It's just the modules that you add. So doing this, is probably really good for just a little bit of extra power. Right? It's the exact same. I, I get a little more crushed stone out of it. I think the crusher module's OP. So I really do, I've been talking for like two episodes about getting this Caterium factory replaced and making a big facility. And I've been kind of sketching some stuff around and I think this factory is going to be freaking enormous. And it's, what I want to do is make all the tier two stuff that I can make right now. So AI limiters, bronze flame, frames, lead frames, rotors, simple conveyor belts. But then I sit there and I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to do that. Do I want to do all the steel stuff too? Which is not a whole bunch. Like, do I want to make it permanent? Where is it? Right here. So, I mean, beam, pipe, uh, rod, screws, and then the stators. But if I'm going to make stators, and I have rotors in the same factory, do I just make motors? Assuming that it's the same recipe. So I'm going to unlock this advanced parts, which advanced parts and coal heater are the only thing I can unlock right now without the encased industrial beams. So let's unlock this and see how difficult these things are. And uh, I'm sure this is going to be nuts. But let's unlock it and find out. Heavy modular frame. Uh, it's not terrible, actually. That is not as bad as I thought. Three tier one parts, and then modular frame is not even like tier two. It's like one and a half, because it's all, all iron. And then motors. Okay, good. Stators and rotors. And then case industrial beams. Is almost the same as vanilla. Steel beams and concrete. Maybe that is the same as vanilla. So I feel like I should just do this. Just do it all. Even even start automating what we just unlocked there. These three. It's going to be a lot. But like, think about how good a shape we'll be in after that. But then... Ugh, then I have these... Oh, I, I can't make these without a manufacturer. I'm dumb. Did not notice that, so I have to make these by hand. Let's get this coal heater unlocked. I, I'm not sure I'm even going to use it. I don't think the... Uh, oh, shoot, I got to wait. I don't think the ratios... Like, I think you use quite a bit of coal in these heaters. Like, biomass, the compact biomass is still better, I think. I don't know for sure. I forgot I had almost a hundred of these heavy modular frames uh, just from hard drive runs. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock this fluid and gas module. We can try and figure out what that's about. And then we can take a look at the explosives. So it looks like with the fluid and gas module, you just put some kind of fluid or gas to it. And depending on what fluid or gas you put to it, you get more efficiency coming out of the miner. But uh, it doesn't look like there's anywhere that tells you what fluids and what gases give you what efficiency. So I guess uh, we'll have to experiment with that later. Alright, that was easy. Let's see what this sulfur powder and carbon dust are all about. And we can't do the next until we get... Rubber. Unless I found these, and then we could maybe... 
rush it. Sulfur powder. Oh, that's how you make black powder. So this is, I'm curious about this carbon dust. Okay, so that's it. I literally just need coal. Coal to carbon dust. Shoot, okay. Wow, look at how much more you get out of the crusher module. Wow, you get a lot more. So I know I'm gonna hate myself for this, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna make these part of my tier two factory. And then I should be automating everything and that I need for phase two. And we can start trucking those over to the space elevator depot. Hopefully these aren't too bad. We'll see. Okay, staters and cable. Uh, it could be worse. I'm going to be making a lot of staters though. And then the other one was the versatile framework. Uh, okay. Brass. Brass is... throws a little wrench into things. So we'll have to figure that out if I want to do brass over here or not. If I'm going to do brass in the tier 2 factory, I'm going to do brass and bronze so that I can do the tier 3 belts, the uh, plain conveyor belt parts. And then this factory will go away, which I, I, I don't hate that idea. So when I said I was going to regret this factory, this is what I mean. So this is just my... the parts that I'm going to be putting into storage. I haven't even started on how I'm going to construct these parts yet on this flowchart. This is just all my final outputs. So, uh... Yeah, wish me luck. Okay, well, <clears throat> never mind. <laughs> I guess I won't be using this program. It's kind of a waste of time. I could do the free trial, but I am notorious for doing the free trial and then not canceling it and getting charged for at least the first rotation. Plus, I'm not sure seven days are going to be enough for this factory. This might be a two-weeker. Uh, I guess we'll find out, depending on when this video gets released. So I'm thinking about this starter area, or the area where I started. I'm thinking about just putting this factory here. I, d I don't know if it'll be enough space. Like, if you look, center, let's do photo mode here. If you look out there, that's my tier 1 factory. Look at how big it is. That's the tier 1 factory. I don't think it would fit here. And this one I'm planning to build, I'm I'm guessing is going to be twice as big. Maybe. Yeah, it, it maybe a one and a half times as big. So I guess I could go multiple floors. I could go like a melting floor. And then melting and solidifying floor, so making ingots on one floor, and then go upstairs and start doing all the processing. I don't know. I think it makes sense to do here, though. Everything I need is here except for coal, and I can just bring coal in with my uh, with some trucks that I set up once I get my roads going, because I'm gonna need roads to go over there anyway for the space elevator. I say we just do it. Do it here. Got everything I need. So for coal. If you look at it from this angle, the tier one factory in the top right would definitely fit. Probably two of them would fit in the area that I want to build. By that lake in the middle of the screen. I think I'll be okay here. I just don't know how high I want to build the initial platform. So I made a quick 20 by 20 square just to kind of see what it looked like from above. And uh, I have a feeling I'm going to have to go th probably 30 by 30 to, uh, 
to make this okay. And I could totally be wrong here. I'm just completely guessing. Okay, so I went 20 by 40. And uh, my thought process behind that is I like to go linearly instead of in like a square. Like you look at the tier one factor and I, wa I worked across it. Not just like from middle out or anything. So hopefully this is enough. Uh, I, I should be enough. I, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do two floors, but we'll see what uh, how things work out. Okay, so this is gonna be the first uh, trial of the crusher, and I'm basically just checking to make sure that it was still getting 240 on this pure node. And there's this crushed stone here, which I'm guessing the crushed stone comes out of the crusher module. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. So I do still get 240 crushed steritite. Man, this crusher is crazy overpowered. Alright, so I think I have a general game plan at this point. Um, since I can get crushed ores up here I'm basically just going to throw some sorters down and then melt everything down on this floor at least and then kind of see where I'm at so sorters and melters whatever the heck they're called for blast furnaces and then once we get liquids we're gonna have to figure out what to do with the byproducts and all that but i want to see how much space that actually takes up for i'm gonna have iron copper zinc don't need magnesium tin and lead i'll need deuterium i'm missing something oh i'm then i'm gonna have to do bronze and brass it's gonna be a lot i think what i'm gonna need to do i'm gonna need to leave like at least three blocks empty for pipe logistics and then also belt logistics or maybe four total for both because there's going to be a lot of molten materials but I guess not on the front end. The front end there's just going to be water. So I should be okay with just, we'll do like two and a half blocks. Okay so I have my iron. I'm doing pure iron because I don't need magnesium for anything right now. I'm doing copper. Sorted copper, so I'll get the zinc that I need for brass. I'm doing uh, rubite, which is just getting me the tin and lead. And then I have caterium. And I'm kind of torn on the caterium because I can do regular sorted and then I get copper. But I don't think I'm going to need copper because I have two. I have a pure copper node. So my other option is to do the pure caterium. But that's going to be way too much. Way, way too much caterium. And I don't really need it for anything right now. AI limiters? I guess, uh... Hmm. Probably once I get to computers, I'll probably need caterium quite a bit. So do I just plan for the future? And with this, just have extra caterium ready to go? And quick wire and stuff? That's probably what I do. Okay. Plan for the future. Okay, so I was cleaning up my caterium factory that used to be right here and uh, used to have stone that would come out of that miner run across into my plant as you can see if you look closely I rerouted the stone around that way and uh, I'm just sinking right now all the crushed caterium coming off of the the miner but what I, what I was thinking is it's far enough away to I don't really want to belt that far. Um, I have everything else belted in, the iron, the copper, and the rubite. But I, I'm going to be driving by that way anyway with the trucks. So there's going to be a road going through there in some fashion. So I think I'm going to jump right into, uh, you know, an episode or two we talked about making blueprints for, like, the pillars that I want. The issue is... I don't know if I want to future-proof them for trains. I probably should, because trains are not that far around the corner. Um, and then I also need to think about, do I want to put a hyper tube on there? 
and again I probably do so let's screw around with a blueprint maker for a little bit and see if we can come up with a good pillar design So I ended up going away from the pillar idea and just making kind of a plain road. Not a whole lot going on really. The curves are made of the same curb that I made for the space elevator depot in the last episode. And the reason that it's so plain and boring is because I'm going to use this for trucks specifically and then I'll make a separate one for trains. So trains will have their own routes. They're not going to take the same routes as the trucks. My thought process behind that is that I want to use trucks for medium distance things and trains for long distance things. So we'll see how that goes. I have these four parts here. I have this, which is the just straight road piece, flat. And then I have this one, which is the turn. It can go right or left. And then I have this one, which is our T, basically our T fitting. And then the one I added at the last minute is this, which is the ramp. It's just a straight ramp, nothing special happening. Yeah, the first road. All right, I like this. Uh, I'm probably gonna hit that rock. I'm realizing very quickly that this is super expensive to do. I'm going to, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to even get halfway. Oh, okay. <clears throat> We're learning a lot today. this clearance perfect calculated short on concrete okay so th this is gonna it's gonna be tough it's gonna be quite a while before I can actually get to where I want to go wow look at this though this is nice I like this. I like this a lot. Uh, the main point, the main reason I stopped to do this was to get the Caterium over here. And it uh, looks like we are going to be able to do that now. Wow, that's nice. Look at Oh, wait a minute. Does not line up perfectly. That's not nice. That's not nice at all. Look at It's like off. It's right in the middle. Oh no. That is game breaking, dude. Literally unplayable. Ugh. So all that work, just for this right here. This belt that's gonna carry <laughs> Caterium over to this factory. I mean, this was like, I don't know how long this is gonna be in the video, but this was like several hours <laughs> worth of screwing around to get to this point. So this is pretty exciting. That it feel, feels nice to be here. All right, now that we've got all our ores, minus the coal over here, we're gonna need some water extractors to get the pure recipes going, which is just the pure iron and pure caterium. So uh, I'm gonna do this pretty simply. Uh, each water extractor is gonna extract 50 water per minute, um, and each pure recipe needs 100 water per minute. So, uh, two water extractors per pipe, and hopefully we'll be, uh, be done here in a minute. Okay, we got all our pipes ran, pumps are in place, water's flowing up to the sorters for the pure recipes. Now I just gotta figure out how to make this ramp look kind of pretty. There we go. That looks pretty nice. Room for improvement, but works for now. 
Okay, that took way more hours than I thought, uh, but we did have a detour with the road and everything, and clearing out the Caterian plant, old one. But uh, we have all of our inputs to our uh, our sorters ready. So now we're going to have the sorted ores. We can melt them down and start rocking and rolling. I am having an issue with concrete. So the uh, blueprint that we made up uses a ton of concrete, as you could imagine. And I'm not making that much. So I might set up a little temporary concrete plant and try to try to get this road complete so that I can get coal moving over this way and we can get steel made and all that. I can tell I'm probably going to regret not putting hypertubes on here. And I also totally forgot that I wanted to put street lights like in the middle and try to give it some ambiance. So let's see what it'll take to build hypertubes and if it's easier than I'm thinking it's going to be then we can redo our blueprints before we get too far along in our universal road. Okay, so what do hypertubes take to make? Just brass? I'm assuming that's brass. Yep. Brass pipes and glass. Awesome. That's actually really cheap. Very doable. Oh, okay. Okay, the entrances take the encased industrial beams, which is fine. Sweet. So while trying to update my blueprints, I was testing out some street lights. I don't I don't know how I feel about this. Um Yeah, I feel like maybe it's too frequent. But I don't really want to do like if I do half of the amount if I do like this. Uh, yeah, I don't think I like that very much. Uh, I, maybe I just go with none, honestly. No lights. Hey. It's probably the way to go until I can figure out something better. Okay, so street lights are out. And here's the blueprints with just the hypertube. Um, and I also added some power just along the side there. That way I don't have to have poles kind of strung all over the place. I, I could, I thought about putting the power underneath the blueprint, just like down the middle or something, but then I'd have to redo all the blueprints because I have to like lift them up. Unless somebody knows like a trick to where I don't have to totally erase and rebuild this like a, a few meters higher. If you do, let me know. But uh, until then, I'm just going to keep my power like this. Alright, our first hypertube trip of the series. Let's go. So, maybe somebody can explain what happened there? That was really weird. So, like, halfway through, I started, like, getting bumped every single support that I went through. And then, at the very end, like, in one of these couple, I actually got a little speed boost. So, I know when I was putting the hypertubes together, because I didn't use the blueprints here, I started constructing from that end this way, and then about halfway through, I had to go get materials, and then I finished constructing from this part down. So I wonder if that had something to do with me starting, it getting all weird and starting to like bump me. I bet that's what it was. So, uh, I don't know if that's a vanilla thing or not. I, I used a lot of hypertubes in my playthrough when hypertubes first came out. And I don't think I ever ran into that, but 
at least for this mod, um, you have to build in one direction, it, it looks like. Unless I just got unlucky and ran into a bug. Alright, we did it. We built the road. Built the bridge. From over yonder to the space elevator. Also, there's coal over here. It's quite a bit of uh, of concrete, and actually the thing that I had to wait for the most was the steel beams for the curbs there. But that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you for watching. If I were you, I would close this video as fast as possible. I caught myself singing my own rendition of Womanizer, and I stuck it into the end here. Customize it, customize it. Oh, you're a customizer. Hmm. Customize it, customize it, customize it, baby. You pretty fast, get pretty fast. Customize it, customize it, customize it, baby. Fuck.